Hello everyone. This is Coach Ulysses again with our third video on how to play chess. We're going today be looking at how the rooks move and how your most important piece, the king moves. So let's get started. I hope everyone today is healthy and well and practicing social distancing, right? That's the word of the day. I believe we'll get through this. Okay, all righty. So I would like to show you first how the rook moves, okay? The rook moves, The rook. this rook was in the center of the board it moves vertical and horizontal. That's the only way the, the rook moves, vertical and horizontal, okay? So this rook right now is on the D file and it is controlling the entire D file. It is also controlling all of the squares to its side on both sides of it, horizontally and vertically. So to remember how the rook moves, is it's like a cross, vertical and horizontal. So if I was to put this pawn here, let's say this is my pawn, and this is your rook, and it's your turn to move, your rook can, if it wants to, capture this pawn. You just move over, move the rook over, push the pawn out of the way, put your rook exactly where this pawn was, and that is your capture for your rook. Okay. Let's say I had a rook, and it's your turn your rook can come over and capture mine. Okay. How about my knight was there? Same thing, rook can come over, capture my knight on b8 and it's out the game. So the way chess pieces move is the way they control different squares of the board. Rooks work great together. So let's say if you had two rooks here. Let's say you had a rook here and you had a rook there. These two rooks are protecting one another, right? So let's say I had a queen here. And now you'll get to understand a little bit about the queen as well. Um, we're not going to, we, I don't know if we'll have time to go into it, but we, we might. But the queen can move the full length of the board, okay? So let's say it's my turn to move. And I came up and captured this rook, your rook. Now your rook, because it moves side to side and up and down, my queen is in danger. You can just now come over, capture my queen, just like that. So rooks can protect one another, right? This is your rook here. Uh, let's say this is your rook right here. And this is your pawn. This rook is protecting this pawn because it's on the same rank. Same thing if this pawn was here. Your rook is protecting that pawn that's getting ready to try to become a queen, right? Protecting. Now this rook is protecting this queen, right? 
because it moves side to side. Now, if I put an enemy piece, let's say this is my bishop and it's here, your rook can capture that, right? Just like that. Say if my pawn was here, rook can capture that pawn just like that. So the rook can go the full length of the board or it can go the entire width of the board. Okay, so it's either attacking or protecting another piece. All right, I'll show you. Let's see. Um, let's say your knight was here. Let's say your knight was here and this rook was here, your rook and your knight. Your rook is now protecting that knight because it's on the same file. Now, let's say my rook was over here on the B file and your rook is on the A file. You can't capture my rook unless I move it over to the same file that you're on because now it's your turn, see that? Or if I made a silly move, that would be a silly move for me to do that because now you come down and say goodbye to my rook, okay? Same thing here, if it's my turn, I move my rook to b8, your rook that's on a8 can say goodbye to my rook. And so in chess, you're gonna see a lot of clashes. You're gonna see a lot of pieces coming off the board um, and that happens, it's normal, okay? Uh, your, not, your rooks get into the game probably usually in the end game. They usually get really involved in the end game. So always remember there's three stages to chess. The opening, the middle game, and the end game. So now you know exactly when you begin to when we begin to learn how all the pieces move, you'll know what stages of the game you're in and what stages is what's important, what is important to do in that stage, okay? So this is when your um, rooks would be normally uh, moving out is in the end game, okay? Now, let's say you have two rooks on the same file. They're protecting each other. Let's say if you had two rooks on the same rank, they're protecting each other, okay? We call this doubled up rooks, very strong. Rooks work excellent when they're working together, all right? They're very powerful when they're working together. I'll uh, show you uh, an example. Let's say this was my queen, my rook here. Let's say for some odd reason, I make a blunder. A blunder in chess is a very bad move, okay? So let's say I took my queen and it's my turn. And a lot of times that's what's important, whose turn it is in chess because that's when you can either attack or defend when it's your turn. So let's say this is my queen. I come in and I capture your rook that's on D5. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so now it's your turn. So now your rook can capture my queen, that's how they protect one another. Same thing, let's say your rook is here, right? Let's say I have doubled up rooks, but I make a silly move and I move my rook in the line of fire of your rook that's on the fifth rank. Two rooks, two of your rooks are on the fifth rank. Now it's your turn. You can come over 
capture my rook, take it out of the game. Now, if I decide to take that rook, I'm going to be a rook down. You're going to still have your rook. So that's chess thinking. All right. You're always thinking ahead in chess. So if I take that, that's not a good move for me. If I take. Now you come over with your rook and take my rook. Just that simple. All right. OK. Rooks can protect pawns. They can protect bishops. Let's say if this rook is here and you had a bishop here and you had a knight here and you had a rook over here and you had a pawn here. Well, this, this rook in the middle is protecting this rook, is protecting that knight, is protecting your bishop, and is protecting that pawn. So the way chess pieces travel, they could be protecting their own piece or they can be threatening um, their opponent's piece. And that's basically the rooks. Okay. okay. Let's get to the most important piece on the board your king. This is what the game is all about. My 16 pieces trying to come after your king and your king's 16 pieces trying to come after mine and trap it and put it into checkmate, okay? So the way we'll go show you how they move. The king can only move one square at a time in any direction. That's basically it. The king can capture other pieces. The king can also protect some pieces, all right? but sometimes it's a little limited on how it protects, all right? The king moves one square at a time. So let's say it's my turn. I can move diagonal one square. You can move over one. I can move over to E2. You can move diagonally one square. I can move diagonal here to D3. You can come to d6. I can move to c4. Now it's your turn. The thing about queens is a uh, king, excuse me. The thing about kings is kings can never move directly in front of another king. Cannot happen. Illegal move cannot happen. Okay? So there always has to be a space in between them. Okay, always got to be a space in between the kings. So let's say you and I were playing a chess game and we ended up with just a, just our kings. This would be considered a draw because you can move around this board until next week and you will not be able to tra uh, trap my king and I wouldn't be able to trap your king. Kings need assistance. That's why you have 15 other pieces to help you strategize about going against your opponent's king, trying to weaken their position, trying to uh, get an advantage and capturing some of your opponent's pieces so that it makes it easier for you to checkmate your, your opponent's king, all right? All right, so. <clears throat> If I move to the side, this king can move here. See what I'm talking about? We're just kind of like doing the waltz here, all right, right? Whatever dance you like, all right? See, one square at a time. I can go in any direction. You can go there, I can go here.
Okay, so that's how the kings move. All right, now, let me show you how kings can protect pieces. I'll do this. Let's say I have a pawn here. Now, we know that kings can't directly come in front of each other horizontal, vertical, or diagonal. They can never meet. But the kings can protect other pieces. So you see this king here on c7? It is directly diagonal to this pawn. Its duty right now is it's protecting that pawn. So now this pawn is strong because I don't have any other, I don't have an, any other pieces to try to attack that pawn. All right. So as long as that king is next to that pawn, um, it's it's safe. All right. So if I moved here, the king could come up here. Right. So I go here. King is still protecting the pawn. Right, if I go here, king can go back. Now, remember what we learned about the pawns. If this was a real game, you would definitely have a huge advantage if you're playing the black pieces here. Because now this pawn can start marching one square at a time to get promoted. Because it's off of the starting gate here. And evidently it moved up one at some point in the game. All right, so this point now can only move one square at a time. So that's all part of the strategy in the end game. That's part of the strategy. You wanna race those pawns up the board to get promoted and uh, get almost, uh, get, get promoted and get a queen or something like that and then you have a good chance of uh, winning the game, okay? Okay, now let me show you something here. I think we have time for me to show you something, okay? Uh, I'll bring this, this king out. Okay, now I'll show you this. Let's say, I have a rook here, right? Let's say I have a rook here. If I was to use my rook, either bring it here or here, and it's your turn, you can capture it because there's nothing protecting that rook. Nothing is supporting that rook. It's going solo by itself, you know? So, you would be able to take it. So if I went here, this would actually be me putting your king in check because it's in danger of being captured because that's the way my rook travels from side to side. So I have control over these squares right now, right? But I'm not protecting the rook. So you could just take it just like that. If I had a queen, let's say my queen is here and I did a silly move like this. Ah, oh, check. Well, basically, check for about a nanosecond because my king, your king, is going to take my queen. Boop. Off the board because nothing is supporting it. So in chess, your pieces have to be supported. Unprotected pieces is what we call hanging pieces. And when, as you begin to play chess, that's going to be one of the first things that you're looking at is when you make your moves, you're looking to see if your opponent has any hanging pieces, unprotected pieces, okay? Usually, a checkmate will require two pieces or three pieces, usually. Sometimes it's a one-move mate rare, but it, it does happen. Okay. All right. So 
Just like I said, if I was to move this down here and say check, you look around, nothing is protecting this rook. Bye bye. Just like that. Okay. Uh, let me share with you about check on a king. Let's say let's say it's your turn. If you decide to either move this rook here, you find where my king is the rank that my king is on or the file that my king is on, you can put my king in check. What does check mean? Check means that my king is endangered of being captured and I have to move it out of check. If I can't find an escape route, game is over and that is checkmate. Here, I have plenty of escape routes, right? I just got to get off of this file that this rook now has control over. So I can move it anyway. I can move it over here. Now I'm out of check, right? If your rook wants to check me again safely, it can move over here, right? Now it's my turn. Now I move over. Now you use your rook to locate the rank I'm on. You see that if you move your rook here, you got control over the fifth rank, and then I'd be in check again. Check. Now I have to move out of check. You could check me again if you wanted to with your rook. Check. I have to get off of I have to move off of the fourth rank because your rook is there. You're telling me you don't have to go home, but you got to get up out of here, okay? <laughs> so your king can move there, right? I can move my king here. You want to put me in check again? I'm in check again, all right? Okay. So. Let's say my king is over here. Let's say I have a king here. If I move my rook to the C C2, what do you think is happening here? I just put your king in check. So now your king has to move out of check. Okay, who's out of check, out of danger. Let's say I move my king here. Now you could put my king in check if you want. Don't have to, but you, you can. Check. And now I have to move my king. Out of check. Okay. We will work more with the videos ahead on how the pieces move. So today, what we did was we worked on the king and rooks. So next week we'll be working on probably, you will work on the queen and the bishop next week. And then we'll begin to put all of this together. And then once you learn how these pieces move, you are on your way to playing someone chess and you're going to have the greatest time of your life. I hope. I hope you like it. So that's it for today. Be well, be safe, and I'll see you for video four next week.